that's not how any of that would work. I, I don't, you just, I respect it. I, in a way, I respect all of what he's doing at this moment. Like he signed the extension and then he get, he backstabs Kyrie. He backstabs the Nets. And then he's like, by the way, I'm only going to the Suns or Nets. I'm giving you a trade. Well, it's a little odd that he launched, that he gave. Uh, It's a bit, uh, it it depends on what his motivations are. Mm -hmm. If you believe the reports that he wants to somehow turn himself and Kyrie into a package deal to play, to team up again somewhere else, then not really. It just seemed the timing of it was a little odd that he wait that Kyrie spent that one afternoon of leaked reports from the Nets camp and Kyrie's reps about whether he would just become a free agent and take, you know, the taxpayer mid level or the mid level exception from some team for a year. And then everyone's had to say, well, actually he's the president of the union. Mm. No, he really can't do that. He could, but it would be it would certainly not be an act of solidarity with the rank and file or anything like that. But mm. there was this day going back and forth where everyone had to hear these, you know, shams inflicted reports and stuff about, uh, about what Kyrie was going to do. And maybe he would just walk and then he did opt into the final year. So now Kyrie for one year is, I would say a little bit more, has more has more options to go somewhere than Kyrie trying to peddle his services on the open market with a limited number of contending teams with the cap space to actually sign him and in it being a near impossibility that he would take, you know, a thirty million dollar a year haircut. Mm-hmm. So Kevin did wait until Kyrie w- had lost a lot of his leverage before making this announcement. Although reports are that This is not, it's not like Durant knocked on the boss's office and said, hello, I would like to be somewhere else now. But this is something the Nets have known for a bit of time. Mm. Two weeks, I think, is the report. So, look, it's, it's, uh, Kevin Durant is, you know, almost everything about Kevin Durant that doesn't have to do with his actual job performance is incredibly grating and kind of frustrating. Mm -hmm. Um, And I hope he gets traded somewhere that's his last team. (laughs) I just, I don't, I'm I'm quite exhaustive hearing about Kevin Durant's various moods and feelings about things. Uh, All I'm going to say is... Say it. the The way this week is going... I've never wanted to side with the owners in a labor dispute, but man, man. but they, they are like the way NBA players are acting this week. They are. I'm like, you know, it's true. It is. It is. It has certainly swung public, like public sentiment has absolutely pivoted towards the right of a worker to choose his place of employment. But I, it, it was weird. It was all the old backlash of these in like a four year contract is meaningless. And how could you do this to a team? And if, why would you sign that? If you just or just, if you're just going to tear it up when it suits your whims, and there was a, there was a bit of an anti-labor backlash. So I get where it's coming from. Why I, do don't, you I still do? don't like, agree with it, but I get Oh it. yeah, absolutely not. But I'm over here like uh, guys, you are you are giving the owners a ton of ammo when it comes to negotiations. And oh boy, Kyrie at the negotiating table in a year or two. But see, like there's nothing you can negotiate out of this where you can't force these guys to treat the contracts, the four-year contracts, as four-year contracts. Like they can go no. back to one ver- one 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 and ones, and they can just pivot. They'll just be like, "We'll just do that instead. We won't do." Th-. Yeah. Like, I mean, th- some players want that kind of stability. They want to know, like, okay, sure, if my knee turns to crab meat. I'm still getting right paid some players want that i I don't think we should go back to one-on-one i don't think that's very i mean i'm not saying i want that but i'm saying they can pivot i think the players can pivot around i don't think you're going to be able to put the toothpaste back in the tube in terms of players not looking at or big time players not looking at contracts as just we'll figure it out and we know we can get around it we can make life and the day-to-day life miserable enough that you'll 
you'll move it. You'll move this contract. Like you'll figure out a way to appease us. And it's like one of those things where, look, we understand that player I mean, empowerment is good. The converse is like, well, you know, when everyone says, well, yeah, but the owners are honoring their contractual commitments. And I'm like, yes, yeah, sort of. But Rudy yeah. Gobert is working in Minneapolis right now. And I don't know if that's what he wants, but he has zero choice in the matter. Um, I think it's, I, 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 I get the sentiment, especially if you were a fan of the Brooklyn Nets, mm. you know, all five of them. <laughs> um, but. Well, it's the same. It's, it's one of those things where it, one of the most frustrating things about the college football conversation um, over the last two years is that like, look, the portal and um, NIL and all of these things can be good for the player and you can support that. But you can also acknowledge that it's bad for the game and bad for fans. Like you can say expansion. Speaking, like, of, speaking of bad for the game, I'll let yeah. you guys cover this because this is your field of expertise. Well, but, I mean, it kind of blends in. So with now TV. there are two mega conferences and that's it? I mean, we're that's not there it. yet. But that's we're not where, there yet. Uh, I, I, like, I saw that this was in the document that I didn't look at. So yeah. I just wanted to know if we were ready for that. Well, we're not there yet because ultimately the ACC and the Big 12 and the Pac-10 or Pac-12 have to decide how they keep this thing moving. Like they're kind of screwed with the TV revenue and what their media rights deals look like. But I think Pac-12 is right. about to negotiate. So we'll see uh, if they get in. Andrew's ready to go here. Um, Andrew, has some, Andrew has some college football thoughts. I can see it in his in the glint of his eye. I know. Um, and his chin jutted forward. He's doing this for the folks on YouTube. He's up deep inside, and he's doing all he can to, 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 to let them marinate and to I will, launch one into the stratosphere. Go for we, it. We can continue with the current discussion. I just... No, um, there's not much to say. It's like, Durant's going to go somewhere. I have a feeling it's going to be... There were some reports today that the Nets are negotiating in the public are not... They can't trade Booker. Booker cannot buy the laws. Can I tell you where he goes? I know where he goes. You're get you're sending where? him to New Orleans. They're getting Brandon Ingram and stuff for him, and they're gonna do the KD and Zion thing, and they'll trade everybody else but him. They have so many young assets, and they, they have, have so many some guys. Congratulations guys. on buying the four seed. I Who mean, the Nets or the? Pelicans? Oh no 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 no! The Pelicans with uh, Durant Zion and Zion is, is and, and yeah Durant that's... and whomever is left hanging around yeah. there. That's like they, I don't think CJ McCollum's going to be a part of the deal. So I think yeah. So those three, those three, like they're the, the Nets, favorites in the West immediately. What? Yeah. The, no, I don't. They're the favorites in the West. I think they would be very good. <sighs> a healthy yeah, Zion and a healthy Kevin Durant I, in a seven-game series okay, is just. I tend to lean like say? on situations like these, the player's going to go where the player wants to go. So I think it's going to be Phoenix. I, yeah. I mean, they, it'll be like it'll be something along the lines of Cam Johnson who I think could be extremely good, Mikhail Bridges, and DeAndre Ayton in a Simon trade. Do you, and, think, do you think that there's going to be more than two teams in this deal? Because that's what it feels that's like. Feels what like they, that's to what the report I saw this money was. They're trying third. to rope in a third team. Uh, but I still think he ends up in Phoenix. I don't think he's yeah. in New Orleans. But why would you acquiesce for Kevin Durant? Like, if you, we were just talking about like how owners like and how GM should look at this whole situation, it's like, no, you're going to Sacramento, man. Like, if we get the best well, that's deal, Kyrie. Okay. that's more yeah. like Kyrie okay. though, right now. Shane, yeah. when was when was the last time an NBA player made a demand like this? Mm. Didn't where did it? Where did Anthony Davis end up going? Where did that's true. I mean, there was a. Where did where did uh, where did Paul George end up going? That's true. That's I mean you can poo poo this whole. I really do believe that all the the, the, the you know the presidents of basketball operations when they look mm-hmm. at this and they think okay, there will be negotiations with our players moving forward. There will be negotiations with all kinds of free agents. There will be trades moving forward. There will be a lot. There is a lot of capital to be built up by and by not banishing a Kevin Durant to some NBA hinterland mm. and doing it seemingly out of spite, doing it even just because it's the best return they could get on the trade. Mm-hmm. That they feel like whatever net gain they have by accepting the best possible package will, over the long haul, cost them. Because agents do get vindictive about stuff like that. They think, why would I arrange for my for my client to go here if they're going to be made miserable? 
and players talk to one another. But then you re- you respond with, well, you locked into the contract and then you went and immediately... Yeah, you, you can't logic your way yeah. out of this. Mm-hmm. I think Kevin Durant is going to go where Kevin Durant wants to go and they'll figure out a way. That's But that's how you lose people in the league. That's how you lose fans. That's how you piss people off. Like, that's just... If Kevin Durant is able to do that over and over, I'm, I, I'm not it's also just that, like, can we also talk about like conversation about declining NBA viewership or anything like that? Well, it's not I, declining I, NBA viewership, but it's just more of like, I think the bouncing around is just, <laughs> there's a reason does. that a lot it of people, does. Yeah. it does over the long haul. It does do that, but agents, their job is not to. They, they, their job is not worrying about NBA fan interest. Their yeah. job is worrying about the, the sort of interest of their clients. That's a good reason for that. Oh, it, you mean you, you, you mean player uh, freedom and uh, the the whole player empowerment era may have actually <laughs> may have actually turned into some bad faith uh, some bad faith action. I mean, it's a longer conversation, but I mean, weirdo. Twitter junkies like me <laughs> love days like Friday where the fit hits the chan. Uh, we mm. love that stuff. That was fun for me. Oh, was, oh you're talking I about was, like Wendy and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was Yeah, not just the Wendy stuff, but all of the speculation about where did this trade come from? What is the value of the trade? Where will he go? Yeah. Okay, where will Kevin Durant go next? Will the Nets, like, is the market drying up for Kyrie to the point where they have to send him back into the loving embrace of LeBron James and the Los Angeles Lakers? Like, all of that, all of the this hashtag this league stuff that the diehards who spend too much time on the internet really dig probably does turn off a percentage of the population who just wants to watch a game and then has to go, wait, who's on the roster now? Mm -hmm. Wait. This guy's playing there. When did that happen? This is Probably. college football, but yeah. college football is in way more dire straits in this regard, where it's like every the portal where it was already it was usually you had an idea of where people were on the best teams. Now with the portal, that so it's so hard to be a casual college football fan now because you have no idea where anybody is unless it's your job to keep up. Like there's gonna like in the Oregon Georgia game, there are gonna be so many college football fans that tune in and they're like. Is that Bo Nix under center for Oregon? I mean, like Auburn quarterback Bo Nix is at Oregon. And I think a lot of casual fans probably just have no idea that that happened, that he just entered the portal after three years at uh, starting at Auburn. It's just that kind of stuff is that's the antithesis of why folks want to watch. They want to watch because they like want to fall in love with their guys for four years and they're gone. Like that's part of the appeal. And you get like, hey, this is better for the player. But like, understand you lose fans like that because ultimately they want to be able to follow the sport understand the sport understand right. where and things it, are shouldn't, going. it shouldn't feel once it feels like work yes people are going to stop doing it it is work to keep up with what college football is and it's work to keep up with who's on who in nba and then like the protected picks unprotected the lottery understanding the i've uh, got the, the larry coon cba yeah. explainer bookmarked but it is 125 chapters long and yes. i can't parse it without the help of a a, a decent economist or a decent right. accountant. It's very confusing. Yeah. And part of the...